Well, hello everyone and welcome to another Build Your AutoCAD IQ Beyond the Basics. Today we're going to be talking about working with data extraction in AutoCAD 2017. I'm Ryan Bales and with me today is Volker Coco and Bryce Thelen. We'll be, Bryce and I will be responding in the chat menu to questions and Volker will be presenting today. As most of you know, we're all technical support specialists and coincidentally, we're all out of Lake Oswego, Oregon. So just a few reminders here um, about the Autodesk Help webinar series. Um, some upcoming topics this next month, um, the third dimension, laser cutting, that's going to be a cool one, tips and tricks, uh, that'll be kind of a grab bag with about three or four of us. And then we go to Back to Basics, Introduction to Design Center, and then we'll be on a break for the Thanksgiving Day time. There will be no webinar on Thanksgiving, so you won't get to hear Volker and I eat turkey while doing a webinar. So um, just a couple of cool things to look at if you get some time. Uh, the AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD page, um, just some cool links, getting started stuff, learning and explore. Um, remember to keep AutoCAD and LT up to date with hotfixes, service packs, extensions, and et cetera. So what's going on today? Answer day. So today is our answer day. So if you have time, jump over to the AutoCAD forums, Fusion 360 and Inventor, and uh, post a question and get it answered by an Autodesk employee. So. Just jump on there. Germ there are German forms as well for AutoCAD and Inventor. So today we're going to be talking, oh, real quick, we're going to put up some polls. Volker's going to do that. That's right. So uh, many of you have uh, probably been here uh, before, and we'd like to welcome those of you back who have attended previously. If you're new, a hearty welcome to you as well, and uh, we certainly hope we make this worth your while. It looks like about around 90% of you have attended. That seems to be typical, gathering about 10% new every week. Um, I'll go ahead and close that poll real quick and we'll plop it on the screen for you. Pardon the technical verbiage. Um, anyway, so you can see the results there. I do have two more I'd like to go ahead and do real quick. Uh, the first one is more of a um, fact um, checking uh, poll here. We'd like to know which applications uh, you typically use. And so um, right around 40% are AutoCAD users, 20% LT users, and the rest use the vertical applications like architecture, MEP, AutoCAD Electrical, Civil 3D. So um, uh, quite a variety of users here. I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'll be nice and share that with you. So some good results there. And then finally, finally, one last poll for the time being. And I'm sure you're going to wonder, what the heck is that all about? Uh, so just kind of curious if you've done any kind of work with uh, linking AutoCAD tables to Excel spreadsheets or other documents. And we have um, almost a, an even split almost. A little, little bit of a variation there in yes and no. And I will explain shortly why I threw that poll in there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that one. And whoops, let's go ahead and share that one. There we go. So yeah, pretty close to even. Obviously it's not, but you know, we aren't going to uh, worry about the gray area there. I'll go ahead and hide that and I'll take us back to the agenda in this case. So <clears throat> again, welcome everybody and glad to have you here. We are 
going to talk about the data extraction wizard, which is, uh, some of you may know it as the enhanced attribute data extraction wizard. And typically when we're talking about data extraction in AutoCAD, we talk about extracting data from blocks and their attributes. We're going to extract data here, but it's not going to be from the blocks and attributes. We're going to use typical line work you may have in a drawing, and we're going to extract data information about that. In doing so, we're also going to begin by creating a link to an external spreadsheet. We'll do the data extraction, and then we're going to go ahead and add a table to the drawing, which is linked to that external spreadsheet. Uh, hence the last poll which we had. And um, yeah, I think we'll get more into detail about that as we move along. And one thing I'd like to show you is that we have some uh, additional resources here. And the reason I want to point this out is we have previously done a couple of uh, webinars. One is Smarter AutoCAD Drawings Using Attributes at the bottom there, second from the bottom. And then Tables with style. So if um, you do want to just see how do I extract attribute data to a table and how do I create a table with style, then I'd uh, encourage you to uh, check out those two webinars and the data sets that we have available for those. Other good information here as well. So um, that said, I suppose we should just get right into taking a look at how all this works. Just bear with us for a moment as we change presenter to me. Whoops. There we go. That'll be a little cleaner for you all there. Okay. So first of all, um, I do have AutoCAD open. Obviously, this wouldn't be a very good AutoCAD webinar. Um, without AutoCAD. I, I do want to point out that a lot of our um, AutoCAD uh, webinars, AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT webinars apply not only to AutoCAD but uh, to AutoCAD LT and all the verticals for AutoCAD. What I'm going to present here is not applicable to AutoCAD LT. AutoCAD LT has a completely different way. It's an old school method of extracting data and basically it will only extract uh, block attribute data. Yeah. I did provide a link in that additional resources slide which uh, would walk you through the process of doing that and maybe one day we can put together an old school type of uh, webinar about this. Right now, we're going to just delve into this um, attribute extraction tool. Actually, why am I doing that? I need to go to the open command. <laughs> yeah, I'm an airhead at times, so um, pardon me. All right, so I'm going to just open up a drawing here that um, uh, we will be using as a uh, um, as our final output, our presentation drawing, whatever, we're going to place a table in here. And uh, what, what that table is going to contain is uh, data about the pipes that have been placed in this drawing. How long, how much, and uh, total of all that. And um, that, of course, is tied into a spreadsheet, which I'll show you right now, just to kind of show you the information that's in there. There we go. So in this spreadsheet, not a lot of data. This is very simplistic, what we're doing here. Uh, and I'm not going to have any real formatting on this. I'm just going to have a bunch of values. So I'm um, not going to try and make it look too pretty uh, due to time constraints, really. Uh, but I want to show you the process and show you what the power uh, it, that we have using AutoCAD and making the most of the data in our drawings. So um, 
we are going to tie into this and we're going to actually incorporate this column into a table that we have in AutoCAD uh, by having created a dynamic link. So let me go ahead and actually close Excel because we do need it closed. And I'm going to go ahead and type in a command data link. which brings up the data link manager. And by the way, the, uh, you can download the script for this later on uh, after the webinar. It will have all the data set files here and very detailed instructions on how to do this. So I encourage you to do that if you want to uh, do a little bit of practice with this if you haven't touched this stuff before. I'm going to go ahead and create a link to, a, um, uh, to that spreadsheet that I have in, uh, that I just showed you. I'm going to go ahead and just call it cost data. And I'll click OK. And then, of course, a dialog pops up, which um, has me browse for that file or select a file that's already would normally be listed under here. Obviously, I don't have one. I'm going to go ahead and browse. And we'll go to this folder here. And you'll see a short preview of that spreadsheet. I'm going to leave it on relative path. It's just a lot easier to manage. I'm going to link to the entire sheet. I could link to a range. I don't have a range defined within that spreadsheet. And by the way, if we click in this dialog right here, you'll see we have additional options here for formatting and I'm not going to change any of that. I basically just want to show you that. All right, now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we have cost data showing in this uh, window now. I'm going to go ahead and just close this. We don't need it. I do want to go ahead and save the drawing though because uh, we need to, um, oops, I hit save as. We do um, need to let the AutoCAD drawing database know that, hey, we applied this link and it's a part of you now. All right, having done that, I'm now going to go ahead and create a data extraction. And this is using the data extraction wizard. And let's see if I can find it. I, I should actually show this to you guys uh, more often than not. Uh, I don't do that all the time. <laughs> the uh, data extraction, and you can tell I never use the, uh, I, well, I typically type stuff in. So um, where did we hide that little guy? There we go. Under the annotate tab, we have the tables panel. And you'll see we have extract data and we also have the table command here with the style of standard for the table. Uh, you could type in DX or data extraction, which is what I typically do. Having done this, it brings up the uh, extraction wizard. And we can either choose from a template that we create uh, from a previous extraction or uh, we can even modify an existing uh, extraction, but we don't have any of that, so we're going to start with a new one here. And I'll go ahead and just call this, well, basically the same thing that I called my spreadsheet. You could call it anything. Call it Fred if you want, but it's uh, usually better to call it something specific to the project. Okay, so having done that, I'm now going to go ahead and uh, in page two, we can choose to select objects in the current drawing and a drawing set, including the current drawing. Um, I'm going to actually uncheck include current drawing because I don't really need anything in this drawing. I need information from the reference files that are hooked into that drawing. And I should open up my reference manager, but let me just show you real quick in here. We have the civil base and civil lines 
drawing. And that's where we're going to be extracting the data from. We don't care too much about anything else. So here I'm going to go ahead and add a drawing, civil lines, and it now appears here. Going into settings here, we could choose uh, additional information here, so including block counts, uh, extract objects from blocks. Uh, I only want objects in model space. I don't really need to worry about this right now. However, if you're doing a block attribute extraction, then you may want to take some of this into account. For example, you wouldn't want the attribute information out of your title block in your block attribute extraction. Uh, but that doesn't matter right now. I'm going to cancel on that. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. And now it shows me, <coughs> excuse me, shows me all the objects that are contained within that drawing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I don't need information from all this, the easiest way uh, is to just maybe uncheck all here. But what I do want is I have arc line work, I have line line work, and polyline line work within this drawing. And those objects are going to represent pipes that I have, a pipe network that I have in that drawing. So having done that, I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And this takes me to the Properties page. And so uh, depending on what kind of information I want, uh, there are some categories here. So we could say, look, anything doing, having to do with 3D visualization. I just want um, information about the drawing. So by that, the uh, DWG properties, uh, who authored it, when was the last create date, uh, or a modified date, when was the create date, etc. Those are the drawing properties. Uh, general information about the drawing, geometry, line work, uh, mis miscellaneous objects, and those are all right now listed here. So we can get the center XYZ, delta XYZ, you name it. The information is there in the drawing, we can extract it. All, right. all we really need though, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck all here. And I am going to scroll down a ways. And then, lost my place here. Yes. Where's, oh, there we go. Layer. I want layer and length. I forgot which dialogue I was in, people. Sorry about that. <laughs> thought I was in the previous one. All I want here is the layer and length uh, information because what I'm going to do is grab all the line work, lines, arcs, and polylines off of specific layers in the drawing. And that's really all I'm concerned about. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And you're going to get this message here. This is just a warning. Um, if you were wanting to extract uh, information about blocks, uh, non-uniformly scaled blocks do not um, uh, will not be um, extracted because the data in them could be skewed, and that's because they are non-uniformly scaled. So uh, information is going to be off on those. Anyway, we'll click OK here. That uh, gets rid of that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm going to go ahead and having selected my count here, it seems to me to do, I'm having an awkward moment. I apologize about that. So we have options here for our columns, and we can uh, add new columns. We can insert items like a formula column. 
we can hide columns, we can rename those columns. Now, my problem here is that I don't have a formula column. And what I want to do is select the count and multiply that by layer or length. And I'm just double clicking on these to get them into this dialog here. And I'm going to validate that to make sure that that equation works. We'll click OK. We're going to click OK. And there was one other option I wanted to show you here. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to this column here. We're going to insert a totals footer with a sum. Let me just scroll down a ways. So we put in this totals footer here. We also want to combine identical rows. I'm actually missing a step here. Right now it's not dawning on me what else I wanted to do. Oh yeah, the count. Insert column. Come on. Yeah, there was another step I wanted to do here, people, and I apologize. Uh, my brain is just having a freeze. And I'm sure we'll figure out what I wanted to do once I um, uh, once I need to get to that spot. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, awkward moment, people. All right, there. Uh, go ahead and do a preview of this here, and there's a lot of information there. Get rid of that, show name column. Oh, this is going to drive me nuts, people. Sorry about this. Okay, let's go ahead and link this to an external data source, cost data. That's the data link we created. We have other options here to uh, select a drawing data column, which, of course, is going to be my count and then my piping system oops yeah count and pump yeah. that's true that's what I was missing length piping systems check match I can't remember which one of these I used obviously there we go layer in this case. Um, there we go. Click OK. Let's go ahead and click OK to close this. So basically what we've done is said, look, we need to match the layer, layer information, the lines, arcs, polylines, with the column piping systems, which is in our um, spreadsheet. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and click OK. Notice now that we have little icons here on these columns. For We have a new column for piping system, and we have a cost column. I think that's all we wanted to do here. Yes. I feel like I'm missing a step, but that's OK. We'll figure it out later. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and insert a table into this drawing. And notice you can output data. If we hadn't already linked this, we could have output this data to an external file while creating a table. And I'm just going to show you those uh, the options here. Uh, by having selected that, it shows me right now that we are already using a table, or this is the last table we used. Uh, excuse me external source we used. We can also choose uh, comma delimited files, a 
access database. So that's pretty cool. Or just out to a text file. If you don't have Microsoft Access, you can download the Microsoft Access uh, database engine, install that, and then you'll be able to generate an access database. And they do have a viewer. You can view in that or uh, send it to somebody who does have an access database. Oops, I went one too far. All right, so at this stage here, we now have the option to create a table because we told it we want to uh, work with a, um, uh, insert a table into the drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new table style based on standard. And we're going to go ahead and ca call this, um, um, we'll just call it cost table just because I can't think of anything better at the moment. And having done that, we have uh, the ability to modify the table styles here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell style. And so we can create one here called uh, cost data. You can call it whatever you want again. Okay. And click OK. And for grins, I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to the um, uh, colors, the fill color, as well as the um, um, textile. Let's see. Let's go to general. Let's go to fill color. And I'm just going to kind of choose a um, color nine, I think forget what I put in the documentation for everybody to work with. I'm going to go ahead and do a top left justification for this. And I think for the text, let's go ahead and I'm pretty sure I just have some basic styles here. I'm going to use the uh, standard, but uh, let's change it to something like uh, Arial. Yeah. Just something a little better than the uh, ugly mono simple uh, mono text style that we have I'm go ahead and click close standard I think that's good there we'll click OK yeah we'll click OK there let's go ahead and create another oops I did not want to click OK, modify, create another cell style. We'll go ahead and call this um, new cell style cost header. Do a header style. We'll go ahead and click continue. Let's create one more. This one will be based on the title. So earlier I took the um, standard style modified it. Typically I would not do that. I would create a new text style, something unique to this drawing, just like I'm doing with this style name for cells. Because if I were to insert this table into somebody else's drawing and just use data or header or uh, title, then it would pick up the properties of the table in the host drawing, or the dominant drawing, so to speak. So. Um, for the title, let's go ahead and just change the size of this a little bit here. We'll make it 0.65, something like that, just to make a change. Uh, for the cost header, just make a border change. We'll give it double spacing and a border. And that should be good there. So we've created our style here. We're going to go ahead and close this, and I am going to go back for a moment because I did make a mistake here. It dawned on me as, oops, let's go forward. Whoop. We'll go forward here. 
so there are a couple of things I did not do here, and I was trying to racking my brain, and it was while I was doing it that I recalled what I needed to do. So in this here check match, we got that right. Oh, formula, insert. Ah, insert. I wonder if I can go back and do this. Let's go. So I kind of blew it. I wanted to put a um, different kind of um, formula in here. But let's go ahead and condense the um, the objects in here. As we were doing this, I realized, wait a minute, look at all these rows we got here. And it's going to create a table that large. So what we're going to do is combine these records here. So I'm just right clicking on this. I'm going to go ahead and click on combine records mode, some values. There we go. Much better. So anything that is a polyline, it's going to, um, uh, all this has now been reduced to just a few short columns. Yeah, we got it all in there. Good. And it still seems to me like I'm missing something else. But it could just be something as easy as formatting. We're going to find out the hard way. Okay. Fall on my butt here. Yeah. All right, we're good there. Let's go back here. My data, I do want to make a change to my data column real quick. And I'm going to um, select my text. There's a general label type data. Format. That's what I wanted. Whew. I'm really screwing up to you today. For all of you who have been here quite a while, you guys know I have awkward moments. This is probably the worst I've been in a while. I'm just going to go ahead and change this to currency for our data. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, leave the precision as is. Click OK. And I think that's anything else I screwed up on, we're just going to leave it be and hope for the best. All right. Enter a title here for our table. Um, I forget what I called this. Pipe totals. Let's call it that. Just because um, just because I can't remember. I'm going to change my headers here real quick to what I... Um, oops, that's a title. And header is cost header and cost data. Click next. Voila, finally, the table gets generated. <laughs> I know you guys are just like, what is he doing? Yay. <laughs> anyway, there's no real formatting. One of the things I forgot to do was just format this in, uh, as far as currency goes. Okay. Uh, but these are the values that um, have come out of that spreadsheet. And um, it's been a long time since I actually uh, did this one here. Uh, uh, I, I'm not worried about the formatting for the column or the length, what those are, uh, but basically wanted to give you a, um, an idea. Now, I just realized also what I forgot to do, and that is in our um, uh, database extraction, utility where we pick the lines arc and polylines I could have clicked in that field where it said line or polyline or arc and just double click in there and then you can rename that and typically I would call those fields pipes okay and uh, if we have a moment I may go over that again but let's um, take a look at this table here when you first insert a linked table Right. What's going to happen is that you'll see a little lock icon here, and 
it um, well basically the entire table is locked because it is linked so if you want to unlock that you would just select that grip then you would right mouse click over it and then we have uh, where is that there's a lock option here why am I missing it I'm just so um, you guys probably know Victoria she said hey good luck on the web webinar today and I'm going oh thanks I really need it I suppose here's our unlocked she says I'm sure you'll do good oh yeah like I I do bad in my other ones well <laughs> this has been <laughs> one of those webinars for me here once you unlock this that's when you can do uh, uh, certain things to it and I probably should have um, unlocked uh, or modified this one here instead um, uh, that's just unlocking the cell itself Let's unlock this here and then let's go ahead and what I'm going to do now is select the columns here like this and having done that I can now change the format and I didn't unlock it there we go data format and we'll go ahead and change that to currency and click OK over on this side in the table I'm going to go ahead and insert a, um, I've already unlocked that, so I'm going to go ahead and um, insert another column to the left. And let's go ahead and call this the index. So this could be uh, your reference column, your ID column. Now because we had assigned a dollar sign or currency value to our data fields. Um, I do need to change the data type here. Or that's what that warning is about, I should say. And I locked it again. Go ahead and bring that up a little bit. No. Can we please exit out of this? There we go. I'm just going to do that many rows, I think. What I'm doing now is I've got this value here and um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and drag these to auto-fill the values. I'm just going to do a couple of fields here. And I can do some additional formatting on that. The bottom line is uh, there's a lot to tables. Uh, and let's actually take a look at one thing here with columns. I'm going to go ahead and just resize these to make all this look a little better. The grips allow you to resize, they allow you to unlock. Grips here allow me to stretch the entire table, this top grip. The inside ones allow me to resize columns. That comes in handy depending on your data. But that is pretty much all I really wanted to show you here today, how we incorporated the data from the Excel spreadsheet. Add a couple of columns here. What I am going to do real quick, though, is um, while Ryan looks at some of the questions out there, 
is I want to show you where we can rename this to show pipes. Okay, so I am going to go into this and I'm going to let um, turn the remote over to or the voice over to Ryan and we can answer some questions if there are any. Uh, I haven't seen any questions yet. Um, I, think I think there was just a little bit of confusion on some of the steps. Yeah, I'm sure there were, and <laughs> I do apologize, but um, uh, how can I use this to extract a door and window schedule from a floor plan? Yeah, okay. We can certainly go over that real quick here. We have a few minutes. Mm -hmm. but I think the quickest way would be doing it through blocks, if they're blocks. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then either inserting them in the drawing as a table or writing to an external table if you need to do that. So before we go on with that, what I have on the screen right now is that uh, page three of eight where I've changed the name from polyline line arc to pipe. What I want to point out about this is that um, this is case sensitive. So it needs to be exactly, um, uh, it needs to be consistent across the board here if it's all going to be the same type of uh, property. All right, so that was the screen I wanted to show there. Yes, I do. All right, why don't you show them those resources real quick and I'll get a uh, quick um, attribute file up. Let's go ahead and change presenter there. Yeah, we've got a few minutes. So some of the resources available, we went over these. Some of those resources available are um, let's go into the about setting up attribute extraction template. That's for all of the LT users. Just kind of um, should be able to show that. There we go. Maybe show them how things are done in the text world, Ryan. Sorry to put you on the spot there. <laughs> so if you're looking to extract uh, basically blocks or attributes, much of what Volker was showing you is, is identical. So if we use his same data set and we start a data extraction, um, I, think I just created one. So here's my test one here. So this is the same drawing that Volker was using. So if we use that, we just, with data extraction, you can do a lot early on too. Um, if you don't want XREFs, make sure to dis dislike here. If we want to include blocks, all objects in the drawing. Uh, this includes model space and paper space. So if you do have objects in paper space you don't want selected, make sure to change that to just model. So we'll just go through the next. This is kind of the main screen you're going to look for for blocks. Um, if you want to just view blocks to extract for, a, say, a door or window schedule, or um, we just, we just want to extract, you know, these, any of these that are for the civil stuff. We just, the quickest way is just to go display by blocks only. So now we only see these main blocks that will be most of what is in the data set for objects and annotations and kind of stuff like that. So if we're going to just do here, so say we're going to do what Volker did, but we're just going to do fittings, 90s, 25s, Ts. We want to go through next. Um, we can turn all these on and just kind of look through. So we want to pick. MISC doesn't have much anyway. So, um, But really it's just about, you know, for whatever you have here, which is mostly just depending on what you need to show, uh, we'll just show scale and position. It's about, so here's our, here's our blocks. We have our, where they're located. 
the title of them. Um, um, it's this step, this step right, right here. So if you want to output that data to a different file, or we want to insert it into our file here, this is what Volker was talking about. So I think this is where a lot of you guys got dropped off. Um, this is table style setup, so if we're not going to jump through that, we can just go ahead and insert it straight. So here's the T's, 45's and 90's that are in the entire drawing. And you can see I just threw the scale of the objects and their location. So they're all in the Z of zero, and here's their just physical locations in the coordinates. So for a door schedule, you could do scale the block if it's scaled by inches or anything like that. Okay. Well, thanks for killing time there, Ryan. <laughs> Hey guys, sorry about this one here. Um, you know, later on, I'll go ahead and do a recording of this on the um, on our links. Um, we'll have a link to that recording so that you can review this the way it should have been shown. But uh, having said that, let me grab control here, and um, we will go ahead and uh, just briefly go over the. Um, how to extract some attribute data from this drawing. So here in this drawing, I have some phones on a desk, okay? And well, let's actually go over to model space and let us take a look at, um, I didn't really want to do that, just wanted to double click it. So these are the attributes we have in that, uh, stored in that phone, okay? So I'm going to switch back over to my um, paper space layout. I'm going to go ahead and use the attribute extraction tool. I don't have a previous uh, DXE for this, so I'm going to go at data for this. Click save. For this example, I want to include the current drawing. And this is one of those areas where I'm saying, look, um, extract objects from blocks. Uh, I don't have any XREFs. If I did, I may want to extract that or not. Um, I don't want to extract all objects in the drawing, just objects in model space. So let's say if I had a bunch of attribute data in this title block, I don't need that for my table. I want to get a count of the phones. I want um, all the information about the phones, not the title block. So objects in model space, uh, space I'll click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And here I can say display all objects, display blocks with attributes only, display objects currently in use only. So I'll leave that checked, but I'm going to tell it, look, display blocks with attributes only. Do not display all objects. So here it is, it's showing the title block. Even though it's sitting in paper space here in a layout, it's still resonant uh, in the drawing. Uh, so I'm going to uncheck that. I want the phone block. Let's see, did I blocks with attributes? Yeah. All right, that's good. Go ahead and click Next. Now, um, as far as this goes, I want information about uh, the blocks that I said. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck all here. Let's take a look. I don't need 3D visualizations. I do want the attribute data. I can't recall if I want anything else. Um, I'm just going to leave it on attribute data, okay, um, since I'm ad-libbing here. Now, um, let's go ahead and that'll be good. We could change these, can we? Next one. All right, in here, I may not want some of this information. You'll see we have a count. Uh, maybe I want that, uh, the name of the phone, the cost, department, employee, uh, maybe the extension. So all that's there. 
I could add a column here. I can sort these, uh, descending, ascending. Let's do sort by cost. That's good there. We could rename this into something that's just a little bit more user-friendly. Um, I forget the name of that column, so location, I think it was, whatever. All right, so we got that. Uh, all that, And again, we can insert columns uh, that uh, would let, let us uh, sum this, but we can also add those columns after we create the, um, or rows, I mean, after the uh, we create this. Uh, do I want to count? Yeah. Yeah, I think we do, just to show it. All right, so uh, as far as this goes, let's do a quick preview. This is what I'm going to have. If I had more phones in here, I'm, you know, I would certainly have um, more information. Let's go ahead and get rid of that one. Hide column, just to show you. Click Next. Let's go ahead and insert that into a table. Let's also go ahead and create an Excel file. Uh, we'll go ahead and place that on my demos folder and click next. I'm not going to create a, uh, oh, I guess I already created a table for this. Okay, we'll keep all that, the rest of that as is. We will click OK, next, finish. Let's go ahead and plop this table in here. And voila. It's that easy. Now this is in the um, webinar, which uh, Smarter AutoCAD Drawings Using Attributes webinar that I did, I think, a year ago or more. I, for, I forget, but it's all applicable. It works, and uh, that's it. Now, a couple things you need to be aware of. Well, first of all, um, Back to my, uh-huh, uh, let's do it this way. Where did I go? Let's get back to this folder. I just want to show you the, um, oh, it's on my desktop. I'm an idiot today. Personally, I don't think I do this bad every time, but I'm kind of biased toward myself. Uh, I wanted to show you the uh, Excel spreadsheet that it did create. So all the information from our drawing is now in the spreadsheet. Which just for grins do this. We'll go ahead and click uh, make this a little more expensive. We'll save the file and close it. We'll go back to AutoCAD. And hopefully I link this. Uh, update table links. Oh, because I never saved this drawing. Yeah, so always be sure to save your stuff, all right, because um, this didn't update basically because I didn't save the drawing file first. The AutoCAD drawing database needs to be updated. Uh, once I do that, I can also update the Excel spreadsheet and, um, yeah, I'll have to go back into the spreadsheet to update that. Anyway, that's uh, in a nutshell, that is extracting attribute data from your blocks and attributes. So I hope that helped. Anyway, sorry about the confusion, everybody. I, uh, From what I'm seeing, that's about all the questions we had. Or I'm going to go ahead and run a quick poll here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, there was a couple questions just about summing columns and rows, which I think is pretty easy. If you're doing it through an inserted table, just insert a row. You have to unlock the table first. 
if, you if you've exported to an Excel file and then you're relinking that back in AutoCAD, do that externally. Um, just be aware that if you re-extract your information, you may overwrite that file and thus your summary, but just look at it. Yeah, so, let's see, do we have, yeah, we have five minutes here. But it doesn't, it won't push back. So if you enter the cost in Excel or in this table, it does not overwrite the data on those blocks or objects. Mm -hmm. so, data so data extraction is mostly just for reading what's already there, not overwriting backwards. Right. That would be uh, a different database utility. So I've created a new row here just by right-clicking. I unlock the table. I right-click to insert a row below. I'm going to go ahead and select the column here. And this will be my total field, okay? And having done that, I'll go ahead and select, uh, where's my formulas? Ah, yeah, we have it on the ribbon up there, but uh, again, I'm always used to um, um, Let's do this first, currency, and click OK. And that's there. We're going to go to the formula bar, to the sum. And let's go ahead and select these fields here. And just like an Excel spreadsheet, it's giving me the same type of formula. And I hit Enter, and there we go. So we have summed up the cost of my phones. You know, I'm a cheap kind of guy, I guess, because there's nothing fancy about these phones. Anyway, uh, hey, you know, I feel so awful about my performance today, um, and that's the last time I'll say anything about that. Um, I'm hoping that as messed up as this was, that uh, you have learned something new today. And as I said, I'll go ahead and throw this into a um, into a rev regular recording and um, have a cup of coffee first, okay? And throw it into a regular recording, and we'll throw it up there. We'll send you the link along with the rest of the links to the data set and the script that you can use. Looks like about 85% of you did learn something, so I'm happy to hear that. Um, Let's go ahead and close that, and let's go ahead and share that for everybody. All right, I think um, I think that's going to do it for today. What do you think, Brian? I think that's pretty good. Awesome. Well, hey, everybody, check out Answer Day, okay? Um, because uh, there is... Some good stuff happening there. People from all over the company are, uh, this includes developers, this includes uh, our customer care, our product support, our expert elites. They're all there to answer your question, questions, and um, it's, it's a fun event. It's a great learning experience for everybody. With that, we're going to call it a day because it is. It's a Wednesday, or no, it's a Thursday. This is how messed up I am. And we'll say goodbye. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.